27. The following nuclei do not lie in the band of stability. How would they be expected to decay? And then we have calcium, what we need for our bones. We don't want this calcium in our body, though, because this does not lie in the band of stability. This is classified as an unstable nucleide, which, in turn, is going to be radioactive. So the thing here is that radioactive substances have to start decaying. They want to become their better version of themselves, or they they will turn into different atoms, depending on what's going on. Um, but they just want to become a, a better and a more stable uh, nucleide, whoever that's going to be. So the question is, what mode is this going to decay? Beta emission, positron emission, will they capture an electron to change, or will they undergo alpha admission? Now, first things first, always look at your atomic number first. If your atomic number is greater than 83, it's a huge nucleide. It's got to lose mass fast. That's alpha emission because you're losing a helium atom. But I'm dealing with a 20 here, so we're good. So we got rid of the alpha emission. Now, we got to talk about these NP ratios, whether you have a high NP ratio or a low NP ratio. Now, if you actually wanted to go through the whole thing and find out what your NP ratio is, you would have to find out the total number of neutrons, that's what the N is, and you would have to find out the total number of protons, that's what the P is. And any ratio is a fraction, so you would have to divide the number. But who has time for that, right? There's an easier method to figure out what's going on here. Now, if you have a high NP ratio, that means that you have a high mass number. So high goes with high. High NP ratios, high number of neutron to protons, that's a high mass number. On the flip side, if you have a low NP ratio, you got relatively low mass number that they gave you. And, you know, you can say this is the same thing as atomic mass. I don't care, right? Mass number, atomic mass. Um, it's, it's basically the number in the top, right? The mass number or the atomic mass is always the number on the top. So this is the mass number. But now the question is, okay, they gave me a 37, wonderful. But how do I know if that's going to be a low or a high value? Enter in the most important supplemental sheet of paper. <laughs> or I guess it can be found online. But usually with chemistry, always have your periodic table out as a sheet. It's just easier to view. So I got my periodic table right in front of me. It's actually laminated. That's how much I love my periodic table. <laughs> Mainly because I don't, I don't want to get it dirty. I also have a periodic table jigsaw puzzle. <laughs> Is that too much information? I don't think so, right? Just shows how, how uh, you know, how much of a, I guess a, a nerd, I don't know, but I like it. But anyway, periodic table, we got to look at where the calcium is. Now, calcium on the periodic table, it's going to give you the average atomic mass, which means that they crunch all the nucleides together and they spit out the average mass of all of your individual isotopes. And on my periodic table, it might be a little bit different from yours, but on my periodic table, the number is 40.08. It could be off by, you know, maybe a hundredth or so. But the idea here is round that average number to the nearest whole number. And that means that it's going to be a 40. Which means that the stable form of calcium, because if it's the most abundant, right, that means that it's going to be the most stable. That's the one that's in our body, right, the calcium. Well, actually, we, we, have, we have ions of calcium. But anyway, stable form would be, car uh, would be calcium 40. Ah, but they gave us a 37. That means that this is now a low mass number. So there's the context. The context. And now, since we have a low mass number, we know that our ratio is going to be low as well. You have either two options, whether you want to say that this is going to go under positron emission or whether it's going to capture an electron. 
Um, the difference between these two and knowing which one is which is very difficult. It really has to depend on the lower activation energy. Whichever one will produce the lower activation energy, the nuclei is going to do it. Generally speaking, though, usually I'll, I'll just talk about it in terms of emission. So I'll say that this is a positron emission. But, you know, if maybe on a multiple choice, if they give you this type of question and they don't have positron emission, but they have electron capture, that would be the correct answer. So that's the end for this. What'd you think? I hope this helped. Thank you. I'm going to make this a little, oh no. Now this, this top is not, ah, okay. There we go. But anyway, thank you so much for viewing the video. <laughs> Subscribe to the channel if you want to help us out. Um, we also have memberships on the channel if you want to check that out. Thank you so much uh, for considering. And I look forward to helping you in more questions. So I hope you're having a great day out there. Keep studying hard and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.